Good evening, everybody. And today is the first Sunday evening of the month. And that's the day that we always have our pastor's prayer meeting. So prayer meeting, prayer and worship led by the pastors of ECC. And this month we are praying through the, um, the sayings of Jesus in the book of John. In John's gospel, Jesus made a number of major statements about himself. And so uh, now we've reached um, John chapter 6, where Jesus has been, he's just fed the 5,000. Um, and then he's made this declaration, which is, uh, which the feeding of the 5,000 was prophetic of, illustrative of. He said, I'm the bread of life. And so this um, chapter, he m- makes that statement on a number of occasions, interacting with the crowds. And he said, I'm the bread that came down from heaven. And there are some people who believe him. And there are others in the crowd who say, hang on a minute. We know this this Jesus, he's Mary and Joseph's boy from Nazareth. We know, we know him. Well, let's just pick up um, the story here, the, the incident here. So Jesus replied, stop complaining about what I said, for no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them to me. And at the last day, I will raise them up. As it is written in the scriptures, they will all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to the Father and learns from him comes to me. Not that everyone Not that anyone has ever seen the Father. Only I, who was sent from the Father, have seen him. I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes has eternal life. Yes, I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, but they all died. Anyone who eats the bread from heaven, however, will never die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. And this bread, which I offer uh, so the world may live, is my flesh. Well, this was um, one of the very difficult sayings that people at the time had in understanding. Some people embraced him, others did not. But um, Jesus is declaring, I'm the bread of life. I've come down from heaven. And so he makes it absolutely clear he did not have a normal birth. Um, At this time of the year, as we're coming up to Christmas, often we read from that uh, passage that prophesies the birth of the Messiah in Bethlehem. But it also makes reference, Michael also makes reference to the fact that the one who had to be born um, came from uh, ages past, had no beginning as he has no end. And so Jesus is claiming uh, here, or he's declaring, um, he's actually come from eternity and he is the bread of life. And so God sent manna in the Old Testament in the wilderness to the um, children of Israel when they were coming out. And that was a supernatural act, supernatural bread from heaven day by day to feed uh, physically the children of Israel in the wilderness. And that, again, was a prophetic pointer to what God was going to do later where the true bread from heaven, this is what Jesus is saying, the true bread from heaven is coming. And now this time, if you feed on this bread from heaven, that is Jesus himself, then you will never go hungry again. This is true spiritual bread. And um, so then, um, the feeding of the 5,000 pointed to the reality of the words. And the people then had to make up their mind. Jesus, he said, I am the bread of life. Look at the miracle of feeding the 5,000. And you can see. Well, some people accepted him and some people did not. Um, And so uh, today then we'll be praying around this area, Jesus as the bread of life. So let's just um, open in prayer right now. So Heavenly Father, we thank you for the truth of who Jesus is. The eternal Son of God came from heaven as the bread of life to give us living bread. And we just thank you, Lord Jesus, that when we receive you into our lives, you are indeed the one who sustains us, not just for for now, but for all eternity. We thank you, Lord, for that life-giving relationship that we have with you. And Lord God, we just thank you that um, you were prepared to come to this earth to do that for us. We give you praise and we give you thanks. Um, 
for all that. And Lord, we recognize that even when people saw you, they were divided. Some believed and some did not, even though they'd seen the miracle. And yet, Lord God, we are in a similar situation where some people will accept you and some people will not. And so, Lord God, we just pray, help us um, to receive you fully, Lord, that we don't just stop at salvation, but, Lord, we receive you fully and um, do everything, Lord, that you've called us to do in this lifetime to do as your followers. Lord, that we will not have one foot in the world and one foot in the kingdom of God. But, Lord, we just pray, help us to be fully committed, fully following you, we pray in the name of Jesus. And help us, Lord, to keep feeding on you our spiritual food. Coming to know more about Jesus through reading your word. Coming to know you personally in a deeper way through our prayer life. We pray in the name of Jesus and that we will continually be growing in you. So, Lord, we just commit ourselves into your hands right now in Jesus' name. Amen. And we're just going to um, reflect on the song that's coming out, a lovely song of worship that says, You found me. We thank God for the day that He found us. You found me. You've stolen my heart. You've stolen my heart. You found me.
Yes, Lord, you have indeed awakened our heart, Lord Jesus. Lord, all around us may be sinking sand, but even in our pain and distress, Lord, you are stretching out your hands, O God, reaching out to us, Lord Jesus, with your love, with your kindness, giving us a hope and a future, Lord, giving us eternal life. Lord, we say thank you, Lord, that all around us may be sinking sand, but on our Lord Jesus Christ we stand. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Spirit of the living God. Amen. Amen. This is indeed a great testimony of a sister who just shared it with me recently. It's, it's the healing of a brother and also how he got saved on the hospital bed. She said, My brother, who was in hospital for over four weeks, is now at home. However, he was admitted to hospital with no knowledge of how he actually got there. He had a very serious infection, not responding to treatment, and the doctors now decided to stop his treatment because his body was just breaking down and he wasn't getting well at all. So the doctors decided that the family should be called in to say their final goodbyes to her brother. Now her brother lives in another part of the world, in another country. This was just over a week into his admission when this happened. The Bible verse that comes to mind is from Philippians 4, verse 6 to 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The peace of God, the NIV translation says, transcends all understanding. It's beyond and higher, out of reach of all our human understanding. We can be calm right there in the midst of complete chaos when we have that peace. Because that peace protects our minds, protects us. And Jesus guards our hearts against anxiety and stress by filling us with a peace that the world cannot understand and the world cannot give because that peace comes from Jesus. And the sister continues, We were asked to come and say our final goodbye to our brother. Those were back home. And the, in hospital, my brother asked, as the family gathered around him, he asked for their forgiveness. He repented. And this was then um, re related to the rest of the family that he is actually asking their forgiveness. Now, this sister who is, lives in here uh, rang the brother. And again, the brother was repenting and asking forgiveness and saying sorry to her. And they were both crying. And she said, I've got something more serious for you to do, she said. Because she knew that this was an urgent hour for her brother. So she said, you've got something really serious to do. And she said that she actually led him um, to receive Jesus into her heart as the Lord and Savior of, her life, of his life. He asked Jesus to forgive him of all his sins and he prayed the sinner's prayer. She said, by now we were both uh, in tears and she knew God always has the final say in every, in every matter of life almost uh, immediately she said I could s s hear a difference in his voice because he was also on the phone uh, he sounded very peaceful Romans 2 verse 4 says talks on God's kindness and repentance 
Or do you show contempt for the riches of his kindness, forbearance, and patience, not realizing that God's uh, kindness is intended to lead you to repentance? Whilst some may presume that illnesses and sickness, disease and pandemics are the discipline of God, the Apostle Paul challenges his Jewish readers to think differently in Romans 2. It is not only sickness, disease and plagues that God uses to draw people to himself. It is God's kindness, God's kindness that draws us to repentance, to to him mend our broken relationship to with him and receive him as our bread of life god doesn't want people to perish but to come to him and be restored in relationship with him however the sister continues that after praying for my brother i felt led to fast for for him for five days whilst he was still in hospital so i fasted for him for five days And guess what happened? His condition started to improve greatly. Uh, The infection now started to respond to his treatment, whatever that he was given for medication. And he was completely cleared of that infection. He started to eat, started to drink, which he couldn't do before because he was seriously sick. And in no time at all, He just went home to join his family and he's doing really well, she said. So I give glory and honor to God, she says, in his infinite love and mercy for answering and he still answers our heart's cry today. Lamentations 3, 21 to 23 says, But I call to mind and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. And great is your faithfulness, O God. So we say thank you to God. This is this really thankful that he received eternal life, the brother, and also healed him right there on the sick bed. So today we go on to our first prayer point, which says, Lord, we call out by name our family and friends to you today, especially those who are not yet saved. Whatever it takes, Please draw them back to yourself as you alone give eternal life. You alone are are our healer, deliverer, provider, restorer and giving us peace and our joy. For those who do not know Jesus, may they know the full salvation of Jesus Christ. Call out by name and let's pray for them. Lord, those that are being brought up to you today, God, we pray for your hand of mercy to rest upon them, O God. Show them mercy, God, and draw them to yourself, Lord Jesus. Lord, you alone are the bread of life. You came from heaven, O God, to give eternal life to all those who are lost. God, those that we are calling out by name, O God, are also being resonated right up there in heaven, O God, right before your throne, O God, that you bring them salvation, O God. Lord, that they will experience you and know you as the true bread of life. Have mercy upon them, O God. Help them to know you as their Savior and Lord, as a healer, baptizer, and the coming King, Lord Jesus, as their restorer, Lord, as their provider, and everything that they need, Lord Jesus, right there, is all there in their salvation. Help them to know you as their bread of life as well, receiving eternal life from you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And now Pastor Sam is going to lead us in praise and worship and then in prayer. Thank you. King 
the carpenter. You are the lip, awesome ruler, awesome ruler, gentle redeemed and redeemer. Oh, kind with us to live in truth, and what a friend we have in you. You are the live awesome rule, awesome ruler, gentle, gentle redeemer. God with us to live in truth, and what a friend we have in you. Cause you are the living word, Jesus, Jesus, oh, cause that's what we go. the living word Jesus, Jesus that's what we call you Jesus, Jesus oh oh oh, oh, oh. you are the living Jesus, Jesus Jesus, Jesus oh that's what we Word. Hey, yeah, cause you are the living word, it's the truth, you are the living word, hey, yeah, you are the living word. So, brothers and sisters, let's join together as we continue to pray. Let's thank the Lord for the promise of salvation through Jesus Christ. As we've been reading these scriptures here in John 6, we understand that there's a, uh, a beautiful promise of salvation through Jesus. Thank you, Father God, that you have promised salvation through your one and only Son, through the perfect and spotless Lamb who came from heaven to earth, who walked the earth as a perfect man and who died in our place. Father, we come before you tonight remembering that you have made a way. You've made a way for us and a way for us to get back to you, that we would be right with you, that we would walk closely with you, that the distance that sin places in our lives would be cancelled, that it would be diminished, that it would be null and void um, in Jesus' mighty name. And Father, give us a heart for the lost, those who don't yet know you. Father, those who need to hear the good Good news of salvation, those who need to hear your promise um, to them. And so, Father, we thank you that your word is true. We thank you that, that your word uh, will always come to pass. And we just pray for those who don't yet know you, who need to hear the promise and who need to accept you as Lord and Savior. Father, give us a heart for the lost. Give us a heart for our neighbor, for our friends, for our family, for those who we work alongside, for those who we study alongside. Father, give us our Eyes, your heavenly eyes, Lord, to see those who are in need and those who are lost, Lord Father. But you know exactly who they are. You know exactly where they are. So stir our heart, Father God, with the things that stir yours. 
Give us a heart, Lord Jesus, um, like yours, a heart after yours, um, and a heart that is like yours. Give us the compassion, Lord Father, to, to love like you love, unconditionally, not looking on the outside, not looking on the sin that each one of us has committed, but instead looking at the heart, looking at those that need salvation. So we thank you for our salvation, and we ask that you would give us a heart for those who need you. Lord, we also thank you for the simplicity of the gospel. Lord, we thank you that it's not complicated. We thank you that we don't have to do anything, but everything is one and afforded to us in Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, that the gospel is so simple. Just believe and accept. Believe on the name of your son. Believe that you have made a way possible. Know that the Holy Spirit is there to help and to uh, enable us, Lord, to share your gospel. Lord, that we would be able to explain your gospel simply. Lord, that we wouldn't make it any more complicated, Lord Father, than it is. Simply receiving the gift of salvation that you have given to us. Father, we know that while we were still sinners, that you sent your son to die for us. And we thank you that your Holy Spirit has sought us out, Lord Father, that you find us, that you leave the 99, Lord, and you pursue the one, the one who is wandering, the one who is far off. And you simply say, come. And so, Father, may we make it no more complicated than you have made it for us. Lord, that we wouldn't put a stumbling block in, in, in others who are, are trying to get to you, but instead we would be a help, not a hindrance. Father, that, that we would communicate clearly. Lord, that we would show your love in our lives and people would be able to see, Lord Father, that you love them through our hands, through our words, through our actions. Lord, thank you for the simplicity of the gospel, that there's not 101 steps, that there's not a, a certain number of things that we have to do to get to you. But instead, Father, you have come to us. You have reached out to us that we don't have to work um, and climbing a ladder of success or a ladder of, 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 of getting to you. But Lord, you have come to us and with open arms, Father, you are ready to accept us just as we are. Father, and that you forgive, Lord Father, even the most wayward heart if they come to you with a true heart of repentance. Lord, that we wouldn't continue doing and living the way that we have led, lived in the past. Lord, that we would turn away and turn our back on the things that pull us down and we would turn our face towards the one who lifts us up. Lord, thank you for the simplicity of your gospel. Let us not shy away from difficult or uh, for a discomfort or for hardship for the sake of the gospel. Lord, whatever this may look like, that we wouldn't shy away from a difficult conversation. We wouldn't uh, shy away from maybe sacrificing in order to give um, a, to, to someone who is sharing um, their faith or a ministry that needs help. That we, we wouldn't forgo, Lord, hardship, Lord, but instead we would partner with each other in the sharing of the gospel. Lord, that, that even as you spoke these words, Father, to your disciples, and they, were, they are a difficult teaching to understand that if we would take, partake of the communion table, that if we would share in your suffering, Lord Father, even as many maybe, even as they heard these words, they decided actually this is too hard for us and we will walk away. Father, whatever you are asking us to do, Father, prepare our hearts to be able to step into it. Father, to, to, to have the ability to, to forgo, uh, forgo any type of comfort, Lord, to, to embrace any hardship. Because, you know, if we do that in your name, Lord Father, we do it for your sake, Lord, then we will be storing up riches in heaven. Not just hardship for hardship's sake, but hardship for sharing the gospel. So maybe there are some people who would no longer want to be um, uh, acquainted with us, no longer want to be our friends, Lord Father. And even if there are people that turn their back on us, even if there's people who persecute us, Lord Father, Lord, that we would be prepared to share your gospel, to show love, to speak love, Lord Father. May it not be done in a harsh way, but instead, Lord Father, may we demonstrate your goodness, may we demonstrate your godliness through our own behavior, our own bodies, Lord Father, that you would use, Lord, us, Lord Father, to be your house that we would take your presence, Lord Father, wherever we find ourselves. And Father, thank you for your eternal promises. 
So as we've looked at this, we thanked you for the promise of salvation. We thank you, Lord Father, for the simplicity of the gospel. Lord, we've given ourselves a challenge not to shy away from difficult or hardships for the sake of the gospel. And Father, we just finish this section by thanking you for the eternal promises that we are storing up treasure in heaven. Father, we are astonished by the simplicity of the good news and the gospel of grace. And whoever believes in the person and the work of the Lord Jesus, that they would not die, Lord Father, in their sin. But you forgive and you have given eternal life. Father, thank you for the gift of eternal life. Thank you, Lord, Father, that you are preparing a place for us. And Father, there are many that are trying to gain eternal life through their own good works and through their own charitable acts and benevolent character. Lord Father, we open our eyes to see the truth that we are all sinners and we are in need of salvation. And there is no one comes to the Father except through faith in Jesus Christ. Lord Father, thank you for the faith. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the eternal promises. And thank you that we can store up treasure in heaven and that you've promised we would live with you for eternity. Lord, that's the promise of hope to come. But also help us with the day to day. Help us with the sharing of the gospel. Help us to live a kingdom life for you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. I'm trading. I'm trading. I'm trading. I'm trading. Hey, I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying it down for the joy of the Lord. sickness I'm trading my pain I'm laying it down for the joy of the Lord so we say yeah, yeah, yes Lord yes Lord yes yes Lord yes Lord yes Lord yes yes Lord yes Lord yes Lord yes yes Lord amen hey, yeah, we say yeah. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen, yeah, I'm pressed but not crushed, I'm pressed but not crushed, persecuted, not abandoned, struck down but not destroyed, and I'm blessed beyond the curse, for his promise will endure, and his joy is gonna be my strength. Sorrow may last for a night, his joy comes in the morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trading my sorrows, I'm trading my shame, and I'm laying it down for the joy of the Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Amen. See, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Amen. I'm pressed but not crushed. I'm pressed but not crushed, persecuting, not abandoned, struck down but not destroyed, and I'm blessed beyond the curse, for his promise will endure, and his choice gonna be my strength, though sorrow may last for
for a night This joy comes in the morning yeah. I'm trading my sorrow I'm trading my shame And I'm laying it down Oh, I'm laying it down For the joy of the Lord Oh, 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 oh. I'm trading my sickness Training my pain, I'm laying it down for the joy of the Lord. So we say yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. So as we continue to focus on John 6, verse 47 to 51, where Jesus said that he is the bread of life, we're lifting up our missionaries this evening. And uh, our first prayer point con concerning that is, Father, we lift up our missionaries to you and ask that you fill them constantly with a passion to reach the lost with the truth that Jesus is the bread of life. And so, Lord, we do thank you, Lord. Um, your, word of, your, your word actually um, says that the cross uh, to uh, many... Um, is is, uh, uh, is difficult to uh, um, for, for them to understand, difficult for them to to compre comprehend, and so Lord, uh, in this uh, um, in this vein, we do ask that your uh, that our missionaries, oh God, that you would help them, oh God, to constantly have that passion to reach the lost with the truth of the gospel. Lord, we we pray for them, oh God, that uh, uh, you would lift them up. We pray, oh God, for spiritual and physical protection upon their lives. We pray, oh God, not only for them, but their um, their, their spouses, Lord God. We pray also for their families. We pray, Lord God, for the the, uh, the vehicles that they travel in, the places that they go. Lord, we know that every twist and turn that the enemy will be uh, will be trying to pull them down, either physically or spiritually. And so, Lord, we, uh, we, we pray, Lord, fill, uh, protect them, but also fill them constantly with a passion to reach the lost. Lord, those areas in the countries where they are uh, oper operating in, Lord, there are some dark places there. And, Lord, I pray that you would constantly fill uh, their, their hearts, not only with passion, but, Lord, that they, their, your, their hearts would be on guard for the places and the people that they will be going into. Lord, I pray that they'll be spiritually aware, that their spiritual antennae will always be uh, alert to the um, the plans of the enemy and so Lord God we um, we lift them up to you today oh God we pray Lord God that uh, you'll constantly uh, uh, use them oh God for your glory Lord I pray for wisdom that every time they open up their mouths to speak oh God that wisdom will flow Lord I pray that they would always have a word in season for her, whoever they are speaking to just like the apostle Paul whether he's speaking to the Greeks whether he's speaking to the Corinthians whoever he was speaking to them he said that he'll be uh, he, that he is a uh, um, uh, that, that he he is uh, uh, to all men, oh God. He's he, he applies himself in that way, oh God. He's all things to all men, and so Lord, I pray that will be the same for them, oh God. That will say be the same portion for them, oh God. That they will have wisdom concerning uh, that the the the, uh, the gospel, oh God, and let them speak boldly as well that Jesus Christ is the bread of life, and we pray. For our second prayer point, Lord, we pray, Holy Spirit, we ask that you would fill our missionaries with your divine wisdom that they, that as they battle against false religion, against tradition, against witchcraft and principalities and the powers of darkness. Holy Spirit, we call upon you right now. Lord, we pray for Bob, we pray for Kumari, we pray for, uh, for Georgie and we pray for... Um, Joseph, we pray for Akin and Toro, Lord, that you would give them wisdom as they tackle false religions, Lord. Those who are who they come up against, or God, whether uh, whatever the religion, or God, we, we there's so many to uh, to that, that, uh, to name, but Lord, we pray that as they come up against them, or God, that you would give them wisdom. 
Lord, you would give them strength. I pray, oh God, that they will be able to discern principalities and, and, and the different principalities and, and powers, oh God. Lord, that you would uh, uh, give them wisdom, Lord, to, to, to discern uh, uh, when, uh, when, when people are against them. Lord, um, uh, those spirits that come with their deception, oh God, in particular, we pray for them as well, oh God, that you would give them wisdom uh, concerning that, oh God. Lord, when they, when they come up against tradition, Lord God, it comes in all its different guises, but Lord, we pray that you would give them wisdom to discern when, uh, when, when uh, um, the enemy uh, wields the, uh, the, the, the weapon of tradition in front of them, oh God. I pray that they'll be able to withstand. I pray, oh God, that you will give them skill, oh God, in order to uh, to use your word, oh God, to to cut right the way through tradition. I pray, oh Lord God, that you would give them uh, 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 not only uh, physical sp- strength but spiritual strength, oh God, um, in these circumstances as well. Lord, we pray that uh, uh, that they'll be skilled in your uh, in a delivery of your word, oh God, to be able to pull down religion and tradition, oh God, and stop it right in its tracks. Lord, we particularly pray for witchcraft in all of the uh, countries that they are operating in witchcraft is rife and so lord god we pray in the name of jesus for your protection upon them oh lord god upon their uh, their their, uh, their, their uh, husbands their wives their, their, their children lord we pray uh, for their staff we pray oh god for the very ministry itself that uh, um, that will always come under attack oh god uh, uh, that uh, as the enemy uh, um, uses uh, that particular uh, uh, weapon uh, of destruction, uh, witchcraft or guidance. But Lord, uh, your word says that uh, no weapons formed against us shall prosper. Lord, you, you said that, uh, uh, Lord, Lord, as we stand in you, Lord God, that we will, we will, we would uh, uh, resist the fiery darts of the enemy, O God. Lord, I pray that they'll always be, they always remember to put on the full armor of God, O God. I pray, Lord God, that uh, as they go, Lord, that they won't be. Uh, that they will not be caught off guard in, in any in any uh, uh, way, shape, or form, oh God. I pray, Lord God, that uh, that uh, again that they'll be so uh, skilled in discerning the various uh, 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 fiery darts of the enemy concerning witchcraft, oh God, and that uh, Lord, uh, by Your Word, oh God, and by Your Spirit, Lord, that they will repel all of uh, all of these uh, um, weapons that the enemy will will throw against them, oh God. We pray, Lord God, that You would have You You would create for them an open heaven above them, oh God, that they will be able to go into into dark places, oh God, where uh, principalities and powers of darkness are have, have been uh, at, at, uh, at play for many years. But Lord, that they'll be able to walk into these places, oh God, and in an instant that the, uh, um, that the atmosphere, the spiritual atmosphere will change. I pray, Lord God, that uh, they will remember that at your name, the name of Jesus, that the enemy will flee, that the demons will flee, Lord, in, in every circumstance. And so, Lord, we pray in your precious name, that uh, uh, you would give our missionaries or your divine wisdom as they battle against all of these areas. And our third uh, uh, prayer point in this section is that, Lord, we pray for Nepal. We pray for the for, for the, uh, um, the nation of Nepal. We pray for Nigeria. We pray for the Philippines, that the ministries led by our missionaries will have a major impact on these nations as they share that Jesus is the bread of life. Lord, we lift up these uh, countries uh, to you, Lord God. We lift up, Lord, uh, um, the the uh, uh, the leaders of these countries. We pray, oh God, that uh, uh, you would put in place, if they're not already in place, that you put in place godly men and godly women uh, who would be of influence, oh God. But also we pray that uh, uh, that that the uh, um, the the uh, uh, ministries. We pray for uh, UVN in Nepal. We pray for Anu in uh, Nigeria. We pray for Jemi in in the Philippines. That they will have a major impact on these nations. Oh God, yes. At the moment, it may be in re- it may be regional. It may be very local. But Lord, I, we pray in time to come that there will there will be a major impact. Uh, that these ministries will will uh, um, will play a major part in the revival in these uh, in these uh, countries. Oh God, Lord, we speak. Jesus into their ministry. You speak Jesus into the, the land of uh, Nepal and uh, and uh, Nigeria and the Philippines. We speak the bread of life into these nations, oh God. We pray, oh God, that you would raise up more men and more women, oh God, more more young people, oh God, to uh, to take your word for what it is, oh God, and go to uh, the highways and the byways of these um, of these nations to speak Jesus into uh, in, into people who would listen, oh God. Father, we thank you. 
and we praise you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that your hand is firmly upon our, our missionaries, and we lift them up to you, Lord God. We, we believe, Lord God, that you're using them already, but Lord, we pray uh, that you would use them all the more, Lord God, in, uh, um, in these areas, Lord God. Father, we thank you for them. May they continue to be bold and courageous. And Lord, we continue to speak uh, uh, what you said to Joshua over their lives, that wherever the sole of their, their, their foot will tread, that you have already given to them. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. So we're going to continue with our prayer points this or our, our time of prayer this evening and we are uh, going to look at, at the first prayer point from my section which is this it says father let us experience fresh manna from you on a daily basis so father we pray that is your people, that God, that we will daily delve into your word, that God, that we will daily delve into the word of God, that God, that we won't be living off manna from yesterday, that God, we won't be living off a word that you spoke over us yesterday. God, something that you spoke to us 10 years ago, something you spoke to us 20 years ago. But God, we thank you that God, that you come daily and God, as your word says, that you are the, the bread of life, that God, that daily you bring, you bring sustenance and you bring nourishment to our souls to our bodies and to our spirits father and god we just pray that that god that on a daily basis as your people that god that there will be a desire and a hunger for the word of god that god there will be something within us on a daily basis it goes god we want to delve into your word and that father that as we begin to read your word that god that it won't just be words on a bit of paper but we pray that your holy spirit will illuminate that god we pray that your holy spirit within us god will illuminate the words and god we pray that we will hear the voice of god speak to us that as we read your word that god as we meditate on your word that god it will take root within us it will take root within our spirit and god will be amazed at the things that you begin to speak over us and through us and in us that god it will only be 
Jesus, this, this daily exercise, that every day, that God, that your mercies are new, that every day, that God, there is a fresh anointing, that God, every day as we read your word, that God, it will be like fresh manna for who we are. So God, that's our first declaration today, that God, that on a daily basis, that God, that we will experience the word of God, that God, as we experience that word, that God, it will continue to refresh our souls, that God, your word says that man shall not live by bread alone, but by the very word of God. And God, we pray that as your people, that we will live by the word of God. There will be a hunger and a desire within us to experience and to delve and to, to mine rich goodness out of that word. Um, our second prayer point is this. It says, it says this, it says, help us to raise up disciples who, to le- who learn to feed themselves from your word. That, Father, we pray that, Father, that as we go about on this mission of raising up disciples to go into all the nations and to, and to raise disciples and make disciples, God, we pray that, Father, that we will make disciples of you. That, God, we pray that we'll make disciples who learn how to feed themselves. That, God, that, that your word speaks about um, not being mature enough and, and being stuck on milk, but not being ready for solids. That, God, we pray that as the people of God, that as we raise disciples, that, God, that they won't be waiting on us to feed them. That, God, like a, like a, a baby waits for, his, for their mother to feed them or waits for their parents to feed them. And if that food doesn't come, that then there is a there's a lack of nourishment that God I pray that Father as we begin to get older we begin to learn to feed ourselves and God we begin to speak that right now God over those who we are discipling Father for those who are part of this church that God that we will learn those moments and those ways of beginning to feed ourselves or beginning to feed our inner man or beginning to learn how we grapple with Scripture how we grapple with Your Word God how we hear Your voice how we pray, how we not just pray for ourselves, but how we begin to pray for others, that God, that we'll be amazed that everything you're doing, that God, I pray that God, that we won't just create fat Christians, God, we won't just create immature believers, but God, we pray for maturity, that God, we pray that Father, as people continue to learn how to feed themselves, that God, as as we arrive together on a Sunday, as we gather together, God, we pray that God, that those that arrive, that God, we all come with something to give rather than that experience of what can you give me today but God there will be a, a, a moment of sharing a moment of celebrating everything that God has already spoken so that whoever is preaching on that Sunday morning is just confirming what God has already spoken into people's hearts throughout the day throughout the week that God we pray that Father as people begin to mature that God that they will begin to raise up other their disciples around them and as they raise up those disciples that God they will continue to raise up other other believers who are mature and learn how to feed themselves and our final prayer point in my section it says this it says that as we imagine eternity let us share that with others the Father, we, your word says that whoever eats from this bread will live forever. The God, we pray that, Father, that truth that we have as believers in you, that we are going to see eternity. That, God, as we begin to imagine, God, as we begin to realize how big eternity is, how long eternity is, God, that, that understanding that forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever that we are going to dwell in the courts of the Lord, that we are going to dwell in your presence, that God, that, that excitement within us, God, we pray that God, that, that won't be something that we keep to ourselves, that God, it won't be something that we hold on just to for us, but God, we pray, God, let a passion and a spirit, God, light a fire within us, that God makes us, that pushes out to the highways and the byways, that pushes us out into the streets of London, into the into our neighborhoods, into our, our communities, into our schools, into our universities, into our workplaces, 
places and begins to share the eternity with others, begins to share the bread of life. That, that This Jesus who transforms everything, this Jesus who has transformed us, this Jesus who has transformed our lives, this Jesus who has died on our cross, and then three days later came back to life, who gives us eternal life. God, we pray that, God, there will be a hunger and a passion within us to share this Jesus with everyone around us, to share our testimony with everyone around us. And, God, we pray that as we begin to share and as seeds are beginning, have begun to be sown, God, we pray that they will take root. And as they take root, God, we pray that they will grow. And that, God, we pray that, Father, that, that others will be pulled in into your kingdom, the others we pulled into the kingdom of God, the other people's lives will be transformed, that God, our city will be transformed by the good news of Jesus, that God, we pray that that eternity, that God, that truth and that promise of eternity won't be something that we keep for ourselves, but God, we pray that it will be something that we continuously share with others, that we continuously share with everyone around us, that God, that it won't be, there will be something with us that just can't help but to tell others about you, that God, that we just can't keep our mouth. Father, as we wake up in the morning, and God, as we begin to feed ourselves with your word, that God, as we begin to experience fresh manna, God, we pray that in our mornings, that God, that it won't just be fresh manna for us, but God, we pray that you will drop in our spirits things about people around us, people that we will meet, those God moments that when we encounter others, that God, as we begin to tell them about Jesus, that God, that you've already put the work in, that God, from our moments in the morning when you begin to set our days that God that everything is already in place in your almighty precious name Father Amen in Christ alone my hope is found He is my light my strength my soul is going to stone this solid is dry and stored what heights of love what depths of peace when fears are still when striving cease my comforter my all in all here in the love of Christ I Christ.